Okay. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Mimosa Hotline. Today is Thursday, where we come to you live with hot topics, um, client things that are going on, worldly things that are going on, life things that are going on. And we share our insights and tips and tricks and advice and experience and expertise with you. And as always, we have Ronnie Bartless, your business strategist, and myself, <laughs> Ashley Rhoda, your brand strategist. And um, welcome, everyone. Please, I see you live. I'm going to do my little thing where I check in on our comments, but I see <laughs> someone watching us already. So I'm Already? Excited. Yes. Yeah. Hello, hello. Um, <laughs> but please remember, the comments are where we want you to engage with with us. This is supposed to be an open yep. dialogue. Um, there will be opportunities for guest experts, you to hop on with us to BYOB. But until then, if you're watching, please just join us in the comments and uh, tag along with us. Also, live or on the replay. We love if, you know, yep. this time doesn't work for you and you are watching later and you hashtag replay and then fill in all of your questions as you, we go or you go, then uh, we'll reply back. So did I miss anything? Not anything that's immediate, like yes. just, we're still working along on getting everything set up and, you know, and thinking about those BYOBs and the guest experts and all of that stuff. Like we kind of have a structure for that, but like, that seems to be our deadline of like starting that in April almost. Yes. Yes. Ish. And I would like to say something I haven't told you about is a astrologically, it's a great time for us to be doing that in April. Um, I was working with Umwa Luna, shout out Umwa. Um, and she was doing this like 2023 astrological projection and just heads up. It's great for us. So anyways, oh, good. Okay. It's like, we knew. it's like, oh, we knew this was going to be a thing. Right. <laughs> All right. So, um, Full transparency. We've got a heavy topic for you today, but a good yeah. topic. And, um, wow. I think we're both very excited to ish dive into this. Um, and I don't know where to start. Um, I feel like we should well, be like how we started the year, a conversation, how it keeps coming up, our hesitancy to it. And then like, yeah, it is, but you, yeah. So I'm, well, I'll just give some background. How do we, yes. how, how about we start there? Um, this was actually our topic for last week mm -hmm. that we didn't do, but still yeah. had a really great conversation, which I'm going to plug last week's show because you should go back and watch it because it was really good. <laughs> yeah, it was really good. Yeah. There, there was a lot of great topics, but I think that, you you know, you and I talk, uh, you know, every Sunday, we actually talk like all week long, but <laughs> very consistently every Sunday, <laughs> I don't know, but very consistently every Sunday. And then every Thursday when we do this and Sundays, we tend to like really dive into heavy kinds of things. Um, and so I think you and I probably even started this conversation, even in the fall, like it's, we've been talking about this for a while of this concept of being soul tired, which for me, like is beyond burnout. Like everybody in business talks about how they burn out and it is for sure true. And we do that in the hustle culture very easily. Cause this kind of all ties in with that, like hustle culture. That's hard to say hustle culture, like mindset that you got to do everything and you should do, should do, should do. And you get burnt out because you're doing now, you know, like hashtag all the things. And that's a real for real thing. But then even beyond that, you kind of get to this point where you're just like, even just soul tired, like you get to the burnout and you're like, all right, well, I'm going to take some time off and like kind of streamline things. And then you still feel the same way. And for me, and I'm just going to call myself out here and just be the sacrilegious lamb of thinking about this is, you know, at 45 years old, I'm like, it feels kind of like a midlife crisis almost like it, like, is this it? Like, is this all there is? And I'm actually really curious to know your perspective on this being at a different age than me. Like, I think we probably have a different way of viewing it a little bit. Um, you know, and it pops up for me a lot in work, particularly in the past year of really going, you know, I love what I do. I love working with people. I'm really good at what I do, but how, like, is this it? Like I want to, I want to work, but I don't want to work this hard. And I've, we've talked about that before a lot, you know, yeah. about, we just don't want to work this hard. And it's not that I'm afraid of hard work. That's not my point. The point is how do I work smarter and not harder doing what I really love? Yeah. Um, you know, and I think that's where it kind of comes down to that like point in life of 
like what's got to change do you want to change what's going to change like how does it change what does it look like do you even know where you're going and you kind of feel a little lost like absolutely yeah that was the best explanation first of all so bravo yes thank you oh thanks (laughs) Uh, so I think the elements that I want to speak to of everything that you just said because it was so genius but um I think soul tired again to just from my perspective and as we've been talking about it, the way I like integrate it is, you know, it's that it's like past the push. Like you've been pushing, you've been trying, you've hired someone new, you hired a different coach, you tried Mm -hmm. a different strategy. You just, you've been going, 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 going and shout out to our favorite Shauna, you know, she's doing her three part series right now that Mm -hmm. is mind blowing. And I think she kind of would associate this with the control part where like you, you, you're just controlling every bit and you're, you're frantic with it. And you're, you're unfortunately in desperate or scarcity or stressed energy Mm -hmm. doing everything. And so you're trying and you're trying to be motivated when you should be resting, but it's this like fight or flight response thing that you're doing. And then all of a sudden you hit a wall and it's just like you crack and you like fall to your knees. You question life, you question Mm -hmm. God, you question everything that you've ever been taught. And you're like, fuck, like, yeah. It's happened to me twice. Um, sacrificial lamb as well. Once about a couple years ago, let's say three years ago or so, I was headed to the E Women Network conference. Like my life was planned, you know. Like I had things going on. I was going to the E Women Network conference. Nothing was working. I was just like, you know what? It's time to call time of death. Like this business is mm-hmm. never going to work because I've tried it in every way I can possibly think. And like, fuck it. Like just fuck it. And I remember, um, I'm a bachelor. So I live very, you know, I don't always have a full fridge except for, you know, grocery day, things like that. Like it gets a little rough. And I remember, you know, jokingly, but this isn't funny. Um, all I had was like half a bottle of Rose and like a family size, like bowl of watermelon. And I just, I was like, of course, like, that's what I'm left with. Like I'm dying today, you know, just like this existential crisis of like, blah. Mm-hmm. And I remember getting into the shower with my bottle of wine. Like I should have been clothed. I wasn't, but like, I just got into the shower and ate my watermelon, drank the rosé and like, you know, on an empty stomach, which is just a great idea. And I was just like, <laughs> you know what? Like, give me a fucking sign because my business. And I think for you too, it's a calling. It's like, my life purpose. This isn't just like, oh, I want to be a brander. Like, oh, that's fun. Let's go make some money and I can be a millionaire. Like, no, this is like deep. It's in my soul. It's like embedded into me. It is my identity. It's who I am. And so when I get into this, it's not just like business isn't working. It's like, who am I? Is it working? Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Like everything. And it's like one little thing then triggers everything else. And it's this epic pile up and you are just like weighted. Like I feel really heavy when it happens. It's just this, like, I can't even move. Like I'm fighting against like gravity or something. Yeah. Um, and then again, yeah, we, let's be honest. It happened when I moved, you know, um, there was a lot going on. So like, mm-hmm. it makes sense, but also like it sucks. And, you know, it's funny because as Shauna was sharing, um, and I'm looking at it now, you kind of do this thing where you just release, you just are like, it's in, and I want to be very clear because I feel like sometimes this might be construed as like, almost like a suicidal moment. Like you're done. And I don't mean that, Mm -hmm. but what I am about to say is like, part of you is dying. There's an old version of you that's kind of outdated and a new version coming in. And it's this like in-between limbo phase. Uh, Shout out Claire Jones for terming this, but liminal clarity, liminal Mm -hmm. meaning the space between and getting clarity in that time. Um, And you just, you do, you want to just like burn it all down, not in Mm -hmm. like, I'm going to jump and die and all the things like, yeah, you definitely think of it, but it's like, that's not really actually going to help this. And yeah. you kind of get this like freedom to wipe the slate clean, but also a degaff moment of like, I don't give a fuck about it. Like right. fuck who this hurts, fuck who I am, fuck all this, fuck it, fuck it, fuck it, fuck it. And then, um, you get, I, I typically get real clear clarity mm-hmm. of like, what, what is the most simple thing I can do? And, um, the way that I'm like 
well, their way didn't work for me. And I know what's right because it's like, you kind of see what everybody else is doing, but you know, your version and what you would want to be doing. And you kind of flip heavy that way. So like Mm -hmm. it's a pendulum, but I often find there's no swing. It's just like, (laughs) like on the other side and, you know, going to you was like, I've been in a year long program. I've done everything. I'm doing all the things. Like I've hired every coach possible. I don't know what's happening. And you were just like, okay, like we need to <laughs> liposuction the shit strip, out of yeah. this and like strip, strip it, down. it down, simplify it. And just like, what do you know that works? Because I, I love what you said to me last time that thank God it was done publicly, but you were like, you were selling, you were fine until you got into this. Like we got to get you back. So often we think there's a problem with us and there isn't, it's just programming at play, you know, shoulds, Mm -hmm. coulds, why aren't you doing this? You should do that. All the things at play. And it like almost puts a stent like between our head and our body and our head and our identity. And it's a clusterfuck. And it's, um, it's like, depression. It's like burnout. It's like extreme exhaustion Mm -hmm. and you're not taking care of yourself. You're not doing your normal routines that when you do actually help (laughs) weird little things like laying out your clothes the night before. But when you do it, it actually matters or like setting up tea for yourself, you know, these little things. Um, yeah. I'm just going to, can I have a quick little God wink in my time zone? It's currently 11, 11, which, you know, is my, mm. my number. It is. Um, it is. I, we must be on the right track on this topic today for yep, sure. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So, um, yeah, but soul tired is, um, yeah, it's, I mean, for me, it's beyond burnout. It, it's like, all of those things. That yeah. Work, it's, and it's like. very paralyzing. Yes. Um, I mean that, you know, as I was writing like notes for myself, it like paralyzing was something that I was like, you just feel so paralyzed because there are so, you have all of these options of the things you can do because you know that you have the skill set to do them and the, the knowledge to do all of that stuff. And then you're just so overwhelmed with decision fatigue. Yeah. You're so overwhelmed with options of things you should do or could do or want to do that, you know, you just get paralyzed with what the options all are. Um, I think, you know, talking about your experience for me, like, I don't know that I can pinpoint very specific times. I definitely had one specific time that was the, uh, for sure a burnout moment, but probably on the verge of like this whole soul tired kind of moment as well. And it's obviously going to sound more dramatic than it really was, but I mean, my appendix ruptured six years ago and I landed in the hospital for 14 days and, you know, it was, I mean, I felt awful. Um, So, I mean, I'm not downplaying that, but at that point, you know, they, it ruptured on a Friday night. They couldn't figure out what was going on. um, And then we didn't figure it out until Monday afternoon. And then they finally went in and took it out. But by that time it had already ruptured, hence why I had just there for so long. Um, And that recovery was like two weeks in the hospital and then solidly two weeks at home afterwards too, just because you're loaded down with all these medications. But I think that while I'm, I'm not going to say like stress of life and all of those things like caused that to happen, right? Like Eh, maybe, maybe not, but, um, it didn't make it easier. At least it was one of those things where you can go, okay, this is a moment in my life that made me learn something. Right. Mm -hmm. Like, so in that process, like, you know, I go into the hospital on Friday evening, um, or into the emergency room on Friday evening and by Monday and like, they admit me. And by Monday, I'm like, I have a full week of stuff scheduled. Like I had like meetings on top of meetings and a to-do list that was a hundred things long. And I had, I mean, I had to cancel everything. Yeah. Like life had to stop. Like my parents came down from West Virginia and I I wasn't even, I wasn't even in my home, you know, at home. Mm -hmm. Like I was at a client's office in North Carolina and, you know, Alan came up and my parents had to come down and like, it was like, it was a thing. And I had to cancel everything. I actually was scheduled to in two weeks to go to a conference in Portland, Oregon. Really? And yeah. Wow. 
and randomly that I had already paid for. And, you know, I landed in the hospital and I got there, you know, they take my appendix out. I'm like, okay, I'm not going to be just a couple of days. Like I might be here a week. It was scheduled two weeks out. And like by week two, I'm like, I'm, I'm going to go home tomorrow. Every day I was like, I'm going home tomorrow. I'm going home tomorrow. And then I did it. I come like, yeah, like come Thursday when I had to be in Portland on Friday, (laughs) I was like, I don't think I'm getting there, am I? Um, so, you know, luckily they were great. I mean, they wouldn't refund my no, my money or anything, but they did at least give me access online to everything that I needed, um, you know, at least something. But I had to, I mean, I canceled life completely for yeah. two weeks. Yeah. And it was one of those moments where I was like, you know, that specific month, I made the same amount of money and didn't do anything. I was just going to say my, when I went to conference, so, you know, me drunk in the shower with my watermelon, you know, that lasted like, I think 48 hours. Cause I too was, my ticket was like two days out. I already had a plan. I was like, this will be my goodbye party. Goodbye <laughs> world. Like goodbye business. Goodbye. You know, I'm just thinking of like, um, hocus pocus, which is like, goodbye mm-hmm. withering. Um, and yeah, I actually booked the most clients I ever had when I was there. I just had this really different energy to me. You know, I was mm-hmm. giving free advice to anybody not, and not like unsolicited by the right. way, which we could talk about that later. Right. But, um, so, you know, just free advice, <laughs> take it. Cause this is going to be my end. Like I'm never coming back to this. Yada, right. yada, yada. And, um, then, uh, yeah, I booked the most clients I ever had. Yeah. I ended up having to come home and hire my competition just to help me get through the the workload. Like uh, it was nuts and it just hit. And so even though I was so tired, I had no time to recharge. It was just hit the ground running and go again. Yeah. Um, but also to relate to this in a different way, because my business wasn't um, mature at that time, but I actually felt like I gave myself cervical cancer when I was 25 because I was so tired in a different way. At that time, Mm -hmm. I was still in the corporate world. I was working for insurance, um, you know, Aflac, you know, yeah, Mm -hmm. it was a a different thing. And, um, I, I did feel like I gave it to myself, you know, like it was, just that rude awakening I needed to kind of stop and slow down. Mm-hmm. And same thing, you know, I, I was at DSW and they called me and they were like, yeah, you know, you're going to need to have this removed. And, you know, like, um, it is precancerous and we want to get it before it's cancerous. If you mm-hmm. don't do anything by the end of the month, it will be cancerous. It was like one mm-hmm. of those things. And they were like, right. if we do it now, we can consider it preventative, but if you wait, it will be cancer. And I was like, Eh. And I was like, excuse me, I've got to go. Cause I was like, you know, you just don't mm-hmm. hear all the things that right. they call back. They're like, miss. And I'm like, oh, I thought you were just kidding. Like, I, I just, <laughs> I'm not just yeah. a number. I'm not like a quota. It's not like so many boob jobs in a month. And they're like, no. And I was like, oh, well, and then, yeah, you know, having to figure that out and everything. Mm-hmm. And, um, yeah, um, it gets to us. I don't yeah. think, I think your body, you know, Well, I I mean, and I don't want to like give the impression that it's this big dramatic thing every time because no, sometimes it's really, yeah, true. true, I mean, like, it's not like every time you're going to have a heart attack because of soul tired, but you will have a, you know, fall to your knees, break down crying moment, I think. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, like I, I, I feel in the past year that I have been very much in the soul tired realm of things and it's for me, it, this, this time has been definitely gradual and not like a defining moment where I'm like, I, this is the I, thing that happened. And this is the thing that was dramatic and that kind of stuff. It was just this kind of like, okay, well, I'm to this point in my life. And is this it? Like, like, is this how it's going to be for the next 45 years? <laughs> you know, like, is this it? And you know, one of those kinds of things where for, for me, I even started this probably for this time last year, like I stripped my whole business down last year. Yeah. And I mean, I still am this way. Like I offer three things. That's it. Those are the only three ways to work with me right now. Um, and I feel for, for me in the past year, there is a calling for me that I haven't figured out what it is yet. And this particular time for some reason is taking a lot longer. And I don't, I don't know why. I don't know why, like what's 
going on, but, and it's, it's been very far reaching into like every piece of my life. It's not just work, right? Like it's, you know, yeah, it starts out with work probably. And then it like runs into, because that's you know, what is most top of mind and what we deal with the most, but hi viewers, right. please say hello in the comments. There's three of you now. Ooh. <laughs> Um, you know, I think it's, it's like scary. Like either we're getting better at being soul tired and recognizing it. And so mm -hmm. there's not that big catastrophic event or something, Yeah. but also, um, lost the train of thought and soul tired. That's all right. I mean, yeah. yeah. Oh, well, oh, oh. I, like, that's what I was going to say is I wonder if the prompts that I used last year might help you now, you know, and it's like, okay, so you're questioning all of this and you're feeling this way is like, is this it? And then, you know, the two prompts of like, what in your life are you currently tolerating? Yeah. Maybe mm -hmm. at one point it served you, but no longer is. And like, really look at that. Like, God, you know, I'm tolerating this and I'm tolerating that and I'm tolerating this. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, when I got here, you know, is this, it makes me think that you have things you're tolerating mm -hmm. that need to be replaced. And then that second question that really, you know, warning label on this one, but are you living by default or design? Right. You know, I wonder if, is this, it is by default in, in like yeah. energy, like even when you say yep. it, that's how I feel and receive it. It's like, yeah. Oh, it's not chosen anymore. So yeah. now instead of like living it out, maybe you played it out like for seasons and reasons. And now yeah. it's like clear the deck and let's space in. Yeah. Well, and even to that point, it's kind of one of those things. And I think a lot of people probably go through this, like you're going along through life, right? Like you, you have to kind of like live every day and you like solve problems every day. And it's, very gradual over time, but then I'll, cause so this happened to me, like with my thyroid year, two years ago, like I ended up going to a hormone doctor and doing a whole like blood panel. And, um, they found that I have, uh, my thyroid's basically broke. Like my whole body's trying to kill it. And so they put me on thyroid medicine and like, a you know, whole nine yards. And I mean, like three days later, I was like, holy shit, I'm a different person. Yeah. And it was that moment where I was like, I was to the point where at the time I was working a full-time job at the software company, I would get off on Friday night, you know, at five or six o'clock, I would probably out of the next 48 hours sleep 30 of them. Oh yeah. And, and I just kind of chalked it up to I'm just a sleeper, right? Like I, and cause I do, I love to sleep. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> like I love sleep, but I kind of just, it was so gradual over time. I didn't realize I was doing it right yeah. until like they put me on medication and I was like, holy shit. I like, that is not normal. I thought it was because it was so gradual. And I think that's what this is for me too. It's so gradual over time that you get to the default level. And you, like, then once all of a sudden it like breaks free or like, mm -hmm. yeah, you I didn't know. realize it, it was yeah, it's like, mm -hmm. what is it? The frog in water it doesn't know that it's boiling yeah. to death. It's slow, like slow and progressed. And then all of a sudden you're like, I yeah. don't know, afterlife, Per conscious perspective in your own life. And you're like, mm -hmm. okay, we got to die and build this again. By the way, hello, Violetta. Violetta is joining oh, us. So hi. hi, Violetta. <laughs> um, sorry for that. Um, so yeah, you know, I think it is a gradual process, obviously, mm -hmm. you know, and, and actually, I mean, it's, that's a blanket statement. Sometimes it's gradual. Sometimes yeah, it's a block, totally. Sometimes <laughs> it's a divorce that takes it to happen. Sometimes it's a catastrophic event. But I feel like, you know, for those that have seen my favorite movie of all time is Eat, Pray, Love, which I don't know if you've seen, but we're watching it when you come, if so, or whatever. But um, in the movie, you know, mm -hmm. she basically... Her first marriage is that, you know, it was fully chosen. She chose it. She chose the white picket fence. Mm -hmm. She chose the man. She chose all the things. She was yep. active in all of it. But when she got into it, she just hates every part of it. And she's like, I don't know what to do. And the guy that she's with is just not the right person for her. And so she like goes into the bathroom. She gets on the floor and she's like, hello, God, I'm Liz, you know, like introducing mm -hmm. herself. And then she's like, I just, I don't know what to do. And then she hears a voice go back to bed, you know, and then that, and then it triggers this like journey she takes um, yeah. to eat, to pray and to love again. And like, you know, she, for her, she had to travel, get away and like redesign everything and come back. I kind of did it like while living in my own life. And I was just like, you know, barricade, barricade and, 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 you know, and you kind of have to like, 
put yourself in a bubble, I guess. Um, Mm -hmm. I I definitely will say having lived through it, it's not easy to do. Mm -hmm. Um, And unfortunately, I do think a truth for anybody that is about to do this is that it's the things that you really wish weren't the things you had to change are going to be the things that you have to change. Like they're not easy things, you know, Um, not to share too much or give breath to an old life I had, but, you know, I had to divorce my family. I had to move out of state. I had to win a lawsuit. I had to, you know, get over being sick myself and different variations Mm -hmm. of like, you know, whatever's going on. Um, And all of that was not like, Oh, like, let's just pick new silverware. Like it's, it's, it's gonna be like, yeah core rooted sub cords, like anyone in the woo woo world, you know, cording things have Mm -hmm. corded to you that you got to like uproot. And like, I almost think of the matrix, you know, with all those cords that go into him, like you got to unplug and like, it's not fun. It's Mm, not easy. Um, yeah. And I think the other side is not to, I mean, to that point too, like, so, you know, I do my solar return every year on my birthday. It's like a nice thing to just kind of like see where the year had been and what might be coming up based on astrology and all that kind of good stuff. Cause I love that stuff. Um, and you know, every year when I work with Aleka on this, she, every year she was like, at the end of this year, you're not going to be the same person. And, you know, and I think that we are like, we grow and evolve all the time, but you do have these seasons in life where, you are, you're, you're a different person in very small ways. And then you have a season where you're a different person in very big ways. Like you are a different person because of whatever is going on. And I think that we kind of every year when she says that to me, like some years I'm like, oh yeah, I am a different person than I was last year in these small gradual ways. And then, you know, like I look at like this year might be the year that's a like big, you know, difference of, yeah. you know, yeah. some years are just different than others. And, um, and I mean, we're not, I'm not the same person I was yesterday, <laughs> you know, I mean, that's just kind of how it is, but I think there are big shifts in that in your life at certain times of your life. I had a weird realization. So, uh, for those that don't know water polo, what I played my sport, it had, um, four quarters to a game, you know, there's like two, two quarters, then a half, and then a qu- two more quarters. Um, meaning like those were the main breaks. Like, obviously that's how a quarter breaks down. I know, but I'm trying to explain this. So when I was looking at my own Mm -hmm. life and everything that had happened, it was interesting. I'm currently 35. No, I'm not. I'm 34. (laughs) I'll be 35. Just kidding. I'm super excited about it. Apparently already ready to be it. Um, But I'm currently, uh, maybe I'm doing that for an easy mathematical break, but you you know, look at it. It's like the first quarter of my life to age 25, but unfortunately for me, it was to age 34. Um, there was a strong theme of development and a strong theme of like, let's break Ashley into who she's supposed to be lovely, Mm -hmm. (laughs) not Mm -hmm. interested in repeating that phase, but it was like, for the first time I kind of saw life as like a game, like, and, and the reason I share this is because in water polo, like you play your first quarter with your starters in, those are like your A team, Mm -hmm. they're the best because they set the tone of the game. Then you pull them out and you put in some of the other team members, maybe B team or not quite your best of the best in there. Mm-hmm. And you kind of run the game out for a bit. And then depending on how the game goes at quarter or at halftime, you're kind of, okay, are we ahead? Are we behind? What can we do? Who can we use? Or is right. this an experience game where people are going to play to get experience? Is this a tournament game where it's going to make our position change for the finals? You know, right. you're, you're strategic about it. And then that last quarter, man, it's, it's a hundred, a hundred percent dependent on prior, right? Like you're either losing, winning, you know, you know what's happening. And so for me, I looked at it like, okay, if I were coaching right now or, it, a, you know, cause I coach water polo, I played it, but if I was coaching or I was playing, we're at the first water break, AKA the first quarter, you take a mm-hmm. water break at the quarters and then a full break at the half. Mm-hmm. And, um, I'm like, okay, have I been hit? Do I need water? Am I bleeding? What's happening? (laughs) And I know that sounds like really aggressive things to be like vetting, but that's what you think as a polo player. Right. Okay. And personally, I was like, oh, I've got a concussion. I am bleeding. I am Mm -hmm. not okay. Like I need to be pulled out, subbed out and taken out for this next quarter kind of thing. And so for me, it was just an interesting way to look at things and be like, Mm -hmm. okay, first quarter's done. Where are we at? How do we feel? Who needs water? Like, what do we need? Who needs a medic? <laughs> like, you know, and then now I'm like, okay, 
I almost ended that era. And then also losing our beloved pets, you know, you mm -hmm. lost, um, don't tell me, Lucy. don't tell me, wait for it. Lucy, sure. I almost heard her. Like, check my phone. You mm -hmm. lost Lucy. I lost Max. And it was like an mm -hmm. end of an era. I could really yep. see like a, a boundary of like, you know, I wish it was easy math and like 25, but you know, for me, it was right. age 34. There's a divide. And I really intentionally left that version. Like I, I refer to it as like Portland, Ashley, yeah. Portland, Ashley's dead. And, and some may see that as kind of like, Oh my God, don't say that. Don't say that. First of all, shush, because you have no idea what you're talking about. But right. second of all, I needed that version of me, that life, everything there to get to this peace. Yeah. But it taught you had to get to this. Yeah. It taught me this, but there is a lot there that mm -hmm. doesn't deserve air or a mm -hmm. breath to be continued narratives, relationships, limiting beliefs, thoughts. Yeah. And of course there's going to be a little bit of remnants as it comes over, obviously, yeah. but I'm so blessed. I got to make the move I did because I have such visual reminder being in an entirely different city right. now with like entirely different people, culture, like people that would have been a trigger cannot just like walk across the street and see anymore or like, you know, whatever. Right. Um, so I feel very blessed and I wish that for others, but if you don't have that opportunity, you know, finding the way to make your move, what does your cross country move look like? What is your hard break look like? And then I think that's what reactivates. Hello, everyone. Um, it's so fun to see the little eyeballs change. Um, hi, let us know what you think, by the way. Sorry, we're yeah. on a flip over here, but like, I know. does this resonate? Have you ever been soul tired? Do you know the feeling that we're talking about? Are you currently soul tired? Are you like, girls, what the freak are you talking about? Anyways, let us know in the comments, chat with us. Yeah. Um, I guess then the next step though, is just how do we revive our soul when it is, right. time? you know, like what is the CPR for the soul? Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> well, and you know, it's to that, even to that point, you doing like, I mean, we talk about Shauna's program all the time because we're both in it and we think it's brilliant, yeah. but you know, she does in her mind over matter program, the whole like inventory of things you desire, right? Like the things you want out of life. And I, you and I even uh, talked about this. I think earlier this week about core desired feel feelings, what Danielle Laporte has her program for core desired feelings and how you kind of structure your life and your day to feel a way, not necessarily meet a specific goal. Does that specific goal make you feel the way you want to feel? Um, and so she talks a lot about like things you desire and things you want, things that spark joy, like that kind of stuff, um, you know, things that make you feel abundant or luxurious. And I have found in the last couple of years, like when you get to this point of soul tired, I'm like, I don't, I don't know what, I don't know what those things are, mm. you know, like you're so far gone on it. I'm like, how mm. do I get that spark back? Because you're so far gone and paralyzed that now you're like, I don't even know what I like anymore. Yeah. So I've been watching from Brene Brown's Atlas of the Heart. Um, it's on um, Netflix, by the way. Um, am I saying that? No, I just lied to everyone. I'm sorry. It's on, um, what's the one you made me sign up for? HBO? HBO. It's on oh, HBO. Okay. Um, no, well, I would have looked for the wrong self, but I'm pretty sure it's on HBO. So, <laughs> okay. I'm like ready to get <laughs> over to the TV and be like, right? Sorry, long week, people. But um, the show notes will have the final answer, but I'm, I'm going to yeah. go with my gut because we trust our intuition now. It's on HBO. It's uh, Brene Brown. It's a series and it's called Atlas of the Heart uh, in, a, in alignment with the book that she wrote on it. And um, it was interesting at one point, she's talking about when she was a waitress and you know, there's different things that you can call out to say when you need support and when you're just burned, you know? So she said, there's first, there's like, hey, you run into the kitchen and you're like, I'm in the weeds. When you say I'm in the right. weeds, that means like, it's on HBO. Yes. Thank you, Violetta. Back <laughs> up with that. Thank, thank you. you. Uh, that's hilarious. Yes. Um, <clears throat> like when you run into the kitchen and you say I'm in the weeds, people will come and assist you. They know you've got it mm -hmm. under control. You've just got a lot and you need extra hands and support. But when you run into the kitchen and you say, I'm burned, you're done. You're toast. You need to, it's mm -hmm. like, what's your login number? They log in as you and you leave. Like you're not even capable right. of seeing anyone or helping anyway. And it's either, she said, you can go out, have a smoke. You can cry in the uh, freezer or you can like go take a walk or something, but you get mm -hmm. minimum 15 minutes 
to do nothing. And I think this reminded me, perfect conversation to be yeah. bringing this in, but it's like, where are you? Are you in the weeds and you're burned out, overwhelmed and frustrated? Mm -hmm. Or are you burnt and you're mm -hmm. soul tired and you need to just stop and give yourself <clears throat> Space. And I think that's where too, Shauna would come in and say, yeah, you need to say I'm burnt. You need to give yourself space, release it, open it up, let flow come back in, you know, whatever. But I, I'm a little different. Um, I won't lie that like when I am soul tired, I do know what I need. I'm just not doing it mm. or in denial and hesitant to do what I know I need to do. Interesting because I think I'm different in this way. Yeah. <clears throat> I think for me, when I get soul tired, it's almost this catch 22 of, okay, well, I still need to keep doing stuff because I, I can't stop. Mm -hmm. Right. Like I can't stop and just go, you know what? I'm going to restructure my whole business and not have income come in for a month. Right. Like, so then I get into that like cycle of, this catch 22 of, okay, well, I, I still need to do everything I'm doing, but I know that I'm to this point, but I can't break the cycle of it. Okay. But like, okay, let's not rupture another appendix. And just say, <laughs> but like, is that true? Like, unfortunately I'm going to be evil and be like Shauna right now. And like, okay, but you're making yourself right. Right. You're saying that you can't stop, but you can. I mean, you said, I mean, it, it was recorded. So unfortunately we have proof of this, <laughs> but you said when you stopped for your appendix, you made the same amount of money and it was fine. Right. So it's like, okay, but what's stopping really? Like, I'm not saying for eternity and, you know, have a midlife crisis, go on a boat and like fuck around. I just mean like, right. could you take a week? Like I just did it. You know, this, I was sick last week and I got spooked but it was fine. I mean, okay, fine. So, you know, work two days and then restructure everything else and say like, Hey, I'm having a soul tired breakthrough right now. And like, I've got to take a few days. Otherwise I'm continuing on the hamster wheel. Yeah. So it's like a shit friend to say that to you, but like, no. Well, and I, I bring that up because I feel like there might be a lot of particularly women, totally. oh my God, like totally. particularly women, because we feel so much responsibility in our to, you know, our family and our household and our jobs and our clients and our parents and, you know, like yeah. whoever it is all in our life. And I think women specifically feel this way of, I have so many responsibilities to everybody and everything, whether I owe them or not, mm -hmm. I feel yeah. like I have those responsibilities. Right. Yeah. And so you get into the, that like hamster wheel of, then you get in, then you get into people pleasing and like, I, I have to keep going on the, all of these responsibilities. I can't stop. They're all depending on me. And that's a whole other mind fuck. It is. And, <laughs> you and know? I know, like I, you know, this about me too. So I have two, two, like characteristics, mannerisms, whatever. Okay. So number one is my stability is change. Mm -hmm. That was a big deal when someone pointed that out to me. Um, I, uh, you know, we all have a definition of stability, right? We mm -hmm. think balance, we think, you know, whatever, you know, you know what I mean? Stability. Yeah. We don't think that stability can be change or change can be stability. And I thrive in yeah. change energy, like moving the furniture around, like it just changes the room or yeah. like you change your hair and it changes you. And like, right. I thrive in that. And I try and trigger it as many times as I can, because I know that's where potential lies. Now I know that that would throw someone else off of a building yeah. like that would be too much. So I oh, know yeah. what I'm about to say, you know, is for the rare few, if not only me. Um, but I do try and like poke and prod to like burst little bubbles of change energy and be like, oh, there it is. Da, right. da, da. I mean, my entire business is working in this realm. So like I'll yeah. take my queen <laughs> status of it. But at the same time, I also know I made a soul choice, a soul choice when I started saying I choose me because mm -hmm. I was so wrapped up in people pleasing, so yep. wrapped up in cultural standards and expectations and obligatory family obligations that were yep. literally killing me that it was one of these moments it's like sink or swim and it was I was getting pulled down by everything possible and again I don't know what it's gonna take for people watching this you me whatever you yeah. don't know what it takes but like 
are you done yet? Like how many times I got to the point of like, how many times actually do we need to throw our head into the wall, get a concussion and come back and wonder what happened? Right. Like, I like I'm, of insanity. I was going to say it's on my computer screen right here. The definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results. People like, and if you have to wake up and have that be your mantra or tattoo it to your forehead, like no mm-hmm. judgment, I would do it in white ink though. Um, like, you know, or, but like settling, I think is what creates soul tired. Yes, very much so. It's I think that's a very good point. Settling, 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 allowing in the wrong way, like just Mm -hmm. settling, like, this is it. This is my responsibility that no, it's not. That's a choice that you're making. And unfortunately where we were talking about, what were we talking about the other day where we were like, actually, I don't think it's a characteristic. I think it's a choice. Do you remember that? talking about something and you were like, I think, and I was like, I disagreed. And then by the end you were like, oh shit, I think you're right. (laughs) You remember that? Um, it was a skill we were talking about. Yeah, is it, it was a like, skill? is it a skill or is it a choice? And I was like, I think it's a choice. Shit, what were we talking about? I remember this conversation, yeah. but now I don't remember what um, we were talking about. Was it um, not integrity? It was before. No, that. wasn't wasn't that? That was a different oh, okay. conversation. I can cheat. <laughs> I do remember having that conversation. Now I don't I remember. Like, what is this? Anyways, but the point is. Yeah. Well, let's let's make it out of this too. Is change a skill or a choice? You or know, is, or gonna... is not changing. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm kind of plugging here that I know the answer. Clearly it's choice, but, um, that wasn't a fair debate, but, um, I'm going to my, like, um, my Ronnie notes. Yeah. I mean, and too, in all of this, thinking about it, I mean, you were talking earlier about the quarter life, like the quarter life so yeah. tired. And I mean, I think that a lot of people would equate in general, like, you know, general society would call this, you know, at 25, they have this whole thing. Now there's a lot of articles about the quarter life crisis. And, yeah. you know, you're thinking you're 25, like, <laughs> you're like, but what are you like, really going through? But right. Well, yeah. The same thing somebody at 50 is going through. It's the same right. inventory. Yeah. I mean, it's definitely, you have just a different life experience, but yeah, at 25 there, you got a lot you got a lot going on. You have a lot of decisions to make for your life. And so there is like that quarter life kind of crisis, which is the same thing of like getting the soul tired. And then you get to the midlife crisis. And like you, (laughs) when you say that in society, the first thing that the image that pops into our head is a 50 year old man that goes and buys a sports car, divorces his wife and dates a young model half his age. Yeah. Right. Like, but I don't think that's what it is. And I, and I think for women, it's very different. And I think like we also need to really address comparison. Yeah. Your well, life crisis can look like somebody else's midlife crisis. And I, you know, I used to take pride in the amount of shit I was able to pack into the first 25 years of my life, but I'd like to release that. Like <laughs> I, I, but you know me, I'm an intense person. Like, I don't want just a God wink. I want like a God slap, like Ashley, wake up, but we're doing this. Like I like intensity. <laughs> and so I moved to Chicago. Yeah. Um, I like intensity. And again, to each their own, you got to see in this, like, okay, Ashley is extreme, but what's my version or what's my, you know, point of this. And you, it, you're not trying to qualify for a race here. It's not like, well, what level of shit qualifies me for a soul tired? If you're fucking soul tired, you're fucking soul tired. Like, yeah, I think it's the owning it, like recognizing it and being like, oh, I'm I'm there overwhelmed like I'm past burned out I'm past decision fatigue like my soul hurts like wherever and yeah wherever you identify with that I think that's the thing you know and um I don't want to live another quarter where I'm prideful in being an overcomer problem solver achiever you know no longer vic- I don't want I'm done with that like enough in the shadow world like I'm ready to be high vibe and like you know high vibe receiving in success in and not necessarily million dollar success that we just you know we it's almost at this point you know what's annoying too it's like peanut butter jelly success million dollars like it's I'm annoyed with right. that <laughs> right but I just yeah. mean like living thriving having enjoying um 
loving being, not just fight and strive and this person's doing me wrong and that person and always on guard, like, damn. Well, and, and not to say that like every day isn't full of like decisions to make and not every day is like, Absolutely. you know, but candies like, and roses and like, but you know, like those days should be fewer and further between, like you should try and have joy in your life most days, yeah. <laughs> you know, like that's and if the you point. Don't, then that should be a pulse check, like, right. diamond, like do something. And I think the pulse check again, is that what are you settling for? You know, right. my word was what, you know, default or design settling. Right. Like it seemed like that one kind of clicked. You finally did your ooh of my, yeah. ooh. <laughs> but like, yeah. I think that's it. And it's like, yeah, the choice. If you're not bred with choice DNA like I am and, mm-hmm. and change DNA like I am, yeah. it's going to be rough. But like, what's worse? Staying in it and like, is this all there is? Or braving a change to see something right. different? Because God forbid you could always go back. I mean, welcome back to the cage in the hole. Like, it's going to be there for you. But like, I think when you're at the, like, is this it place, it's, you know, I'm yeah. not saying this out loud because I used to want to just smack my dad when he'd say this, but he'd be like, you know, kid, you just need to shit or get off the pot. <laughs> I'm like, really? Excuse me. I'm a lady. Like, like you, I need that visual. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. Like, thank you so much. You fuck. Like, mm. but he's right. I mean, it's just an expression, but the the concept of it is correct. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I don't, I mean, I don't think that we're the only, like, we're not the only people out there that have this feeling. I've had a lot of these conversations in the last year with people yeah. of, you know, and particularly at my age, which is why I was kind of curious on like how you viewed it because we're Remember, 11 years. I'm an anomaly too. I'm weird. Yes. You, yeah. I own you know, that. Like, like I'm not a baseline to be bi- compared to. Yeah. <laughs> no. Well, and I mean, I mean, 11 years is not a small age difference. No. no. To be honest, like, yeah. um, you know, and so you'll be yeah. on the oldest station before me. <laughs> I already am. <laughs> like that's the sad part. I already am. <laughs> Like I turned on something the other day. It was on the oldie station. It was like something from the nineties. And I was like, oh my God, I don't, <laughs> I'm going to kill whoever played this. <laughs> but anyway, um, but yeah, I've had a lot of these conversations, men and women over oh, the past totally. year. Okay. And um, I mean, I, and I know that a lot of like business people and life coaches talk about burnout. Yeah. Um, and we see that a lot, like on our Instagram feeds and all of that stuff. And they talk, talk about burnout, but I just feel like what we're talking about here is kind of beyond that. Like yeah. you're really kind of, I think when they're talking about burnout, they're talking about, oh, you've built this business. That's overly complicated. Now we need to simplify it. Right. Yeah. Which like is, you're working 10 hour, 12 hour days instead of right. eight hour days. That's and you're burnout. tired. Right. Like yeah. that's burnout. But you know, and I, I've been there before too. Like this week kind of is that week for me, all of a sudden this week ended up being like, super busy and yeah well and well well, yeah (laughs) well and then last week I was like I don't have anything to do and I and it was one of those weeks where I was like am I actually forgetting everything I need to do or do I really not have anything to do and and that's the unfortunate thing is like it comes in waves that we really can't control and that's why I still love Violetta for her flow schedule and like you gotta like you gotta have a system for when it's coming at you and a system for when it's like yeah so like this week I look at it and go, okay, this week's just a burnout week. Cause I'm tired of the to-do list, but you but get to this... schedule a random brain break member. Violetta would say, <laughs> okay, look into the calendar and see like, when do things start slowing down and schedule a whole day to recharge and brain break. So exciting. You get a brain break soon. <laughs> yeah. I, I tend to do those on, on the weekend. So I, I try at least to, um, but <clears throat> I, this for me though, like is a reward though that. of the phase of burnout though, for sure. Yeah. Burnout is more of that, like just daily, like life happening of work and life and things like that. That's burnout to me. This is this soul tired is de- more deep in like figuring out who we are. Yeah. Violetta shares the word burnout is used in infl- inflationary that's a great word. <clears throat> very often simply wrong. <laughs> so yeah. Like, I mean, you know, yeah. Wrong, the mislabeled, wrongly used term. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah. It's such a general term. I think people yeah, use it's it like so I'm generally. Stressed. Like, are yeah. you stressed? 
are you in the weeds or are you burned? burnt? Right. Like, yeah. Out. I think too, to kind of wrap this up for everybody, you know, one of the things that I do, and I think I want to bring in your rock journal because you hate journaling and we're going to just talk about it for a little bitty second. So just mute me if you must, okay. but you know, things that I like to do are um, inventory, you know, just literally like sit down and brain dump what tabs are open in your mind, what issues are currently on the deck, like what's going on, take an inventory, not to solve, mm -hmm. not to do anything, but just to get perspective when you're mm -hmm. feeling so insane like look at it like clearly i should be insane this is a fuck ton like what's going on here right. second is uh what we call the abundance list you know our high vibe list like whatever you want to call it this is a list of things that you know when you do help you get at that next level or it, it, make you feel good feel fill your soul tank you know your mm -hmm. love tank your soul tank whatever so these are things like just filling your tank of gas, knowing when it's full, you feel better driving the car or clean sheets might be the thing. It's not yeah. like lavish trips. It's the little things, right? Um, make a list of those things. I know for me, I did it last night and it actually helped because I was up till like 11 o'clock and I should have been in bed earlier, but I laid out my clothes and then I ended up going to bed at about 1.30. I couldn't sleep, whatever, but mm -hmm. it helped this morning when I'm losing sleep, but I need to still keep the same day laid out my clothes the night before, made my tea for the morning. So I just come and I pour the water. Like I just do those little things. So think about if before you get soul tired or if you are soul tired, then yeah, you know, let's not rupture an appendix or be out for a week sick, but like, <laughs> let's look at like, what are things a just stop. That's the first thing. Stop. Don't do anything because obviously you're not helping anyone or yourself, but right. two, like, what are those things that like, fill your soul? Is it looking at art? Is it going out for, for coffee and a mimosa with a friend? Is it like, what do you need? What support do you need to get your soul back? And like identity, like, God, I used to love this. You know, I think yeah. this is going to be a big one for parents. Like, oh my God, before my children, I used to yeah. run, I used to do art or I used to do that. Well, honey, the only thing you should be prioritizing is getting that put back into your schedule right? and it's going to feel awful. And shout out Debbie Pickus. Cause she called me out yesterday and I loved her for it. You know, my exercise routine that I'm not doing mm -hmm. where she's like, I want to give Nike a little bit of a zhuzh. And she's like, just fucking do it. <laughs> I'm like, okay, cool. There's no excuse. There's no way out. There's no option of this. It's just time to fucking do it. So like people, there, and there are those list, points, right? you either get to settle default and stay in your funk or you got to make a change like mm. i don't care what this the normal schedule is like fuck it up change it delete yeah. something ask somebody to push off for a week like you've got to do this otherwise you're gonna crush your soul yeah and it doesn't have to be like these huge things like mm. and i can i can definitely hear moms what are some right of your now things? um i mean a, a non-negotiable for me is dancing yeah like right. Like, I mean, walking, that's a, your walks and, and walking. I'm a, I'm a walker. Like that's my walking is my form of meditation. Um, dancing is, is definitely my form of joy. Like, um, and that's a non-negotiable for me. Like I've even gotten to the point lately where people are like, Hey, let's go out Tuesday night. I'm like, I can't, can we do it at like seven 30? Cause I'll be done with, I'll be done with class by six 30. But like those kinds of, that's definitely like yeah. on my list of, of things that bring me joy. Um, you know, or make me a lot of people like you call it, called it an abundance list of, you know, a happy list, like whatever you call it. I call it my luxury list. Like it's the things that make me feel luxurious. Um, you know, like I put on my diamond bracelet today, like, cause yeah. that makes me like feel luxurious, you know, cause I love my rocks, but, <laughs> um, you know, so like some of those things. And so I, I think like, I can hear moms right now and you and I are not moms. So like, Eh. but I can for sure I have a lot of friends that are but I and this is I can hear them right now but my kids need to do this like my kids need to do that and I got to take them here and I got to take them there so guess what while you're in the car listen to the music you want to not what they want to yeah you know like like you're little things like, like that fuck this fuck that in the back amen like you've got to yeah because I can like child. 
I mean, I can hear my friend Jen going, but I got to take the kids here because she's there to the point where she's basically their chauffeur. Like that's all she does is <laughs> like shuffle them places. And it, but I got to do all of these things because the kids are in everything. And I'm like, well, then take them out of something like, or you know? find, yeah, find another way. Like there are carpools, there are lifts, there's like, or, and put them in a box and ship them to practice. Like, I, I don't mean, care. yeah. Well, or even when you're in the car, like do the, like, you listen to the music you want to, not what they want to. Yeah. You know, like or, you're yeah, driving. Or like, okay, so if you're able to get them to all of their practices, then you need to prioritize your class. Like, okay, kids, yeah. like dad has to do it or somebody else has to do it or they have to walk or figure it out mm -hmm. or whatever, but like, or they can't. And you get a class every week, you know, if they have, you know, karate and swimming and this and that, well, then we also have your class on Tuesdays. Mm -hmm. Great, then get to it. But like, you're only a sacrificial lamb because you've given up everything. Right. I mean, and we even do that. We don't have kids. I know. And they're like, <laughs> you know, I'm like, I get it. They'd be like, see, but you but... do it for your cats. And I'd be like, no, I wouldn't. They're going to wait. They're going to figure it out. Like they're going to eat each other. I don't care. <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to like not do the things that I are my responsibilities, like feed the dog. Like I'm not going to not do those things, but I mean, I'm struggling right now, but I just, after she said, just fucking do it. I was like, fuck. So I'm doing it now. Like I will be doing my walking Mondays, my water Wednesdays and my yoga on Saturdays at that class. I think I've been hesitant just because I'm still new and it's a new gym and it's like new kid. And like, what if I can't finish the class? And she was like, then you lay down and you shabasana. And I was like, okay, sorry. Like, it was just kind of funny. I needed the kick in the ass. So I'm down for it, but um, I've been trying to, so I'm glad I know. she did it. <laughs> like, Thank God. Cause I'm tired of telling you this, but yeah. So like even now. <laughs> next week somebody wanted to get together on Wednesday guys I'm going to be swimming so if anyone needs to know this I'm going to work Wednesday mornings lunch take a break and then walk over to the gym because nobody else is going to be in the pool at like two o'clock and then come back and work more in the evening or something but my makeup's off I'm not going out for a happy hour with you I'm not cute I'm a little water rat that wants to be home but we have to put it in we have to prioritize yeah. it and I have not I've been feeling like well, my responsibilities pay the bills and all that. Well, your sanity also pays the bills. So get in the pool. Like, yeah. And, you know, I always get aggravated when somebody is like, you can't help anybody else if you can't help yourself first. And I'm like, I hate it when people tell me that, but it's true. You know, like, I that mean, was actually, she was like, it's like putting your oxygen mask on first. I was like, God damn it. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I, it's, it's more of like the cliche, the cliche of the saying yeah. than the actual meaning of it. But I mean, yeah. it is true. Like you can't you help just, others if you can't help yourself. The way you said it. Now I want a lychee martini. Could you just enunciate, please? <laughs> <laughs> You're like cliche instead of cliche. And I was like, no, I just want a lychee martini. <laughs> Sorry. No, it's fine. It's been a long That's week. my, it's my Southern accents. No, really it's out. great. <laughs> it's just fun. I was like, mm. Look how dopey I am wanting a lychee martini. No, uh, but well, I think I mean, you're spot you don't on. know what's in this mug right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, mine is straight up tea, but I, I do get to go to lunch today, like an offsite lunch. So I got a lift mm -hmm. coming for me soon. Um, Actually, that just scared me. No, we have time. Ooh, okay. So in the end, what are our thoughts? Because, oh my God, we did it. We're under an hour. <laughs> <laughs> Final thoughts, questions, concerns, emotional outbursts for ourselves. Anyone watching? Um, what did you think? Yeah. Was this yeah. like, oh my God, this... me too. Did you relate to it? Do you mm -hmm. feel it? Do you think we're insane? Do you never want to talk to us? Do, like what what what's happening? Well, and this is one of those times where this was not strictly a business conversation no. by any well, means. Like, so I would like to know, like, do how people feel about that when we have these kinds of conversations as well as a do you feel like how many people out there actually feel this way or who is out there going you girls are crazy just do this do it yeah. <laughs> you know, like um <laughs> yeah you know I think and I hope because I I had this conversation with two ladies yesterday and I'm gonna leave names out but um it's the relatability of just shit. I'm not alone. You guys have this yeah. too. Like, oh my God, like how many, okay. You used to laugh about this all the time, but I'd call and I'd be like, I thought I was the only one. I know. Like, no. And it was little things. Yeah. Like for the first year, I think it was just, yeah, I, I do though. I feel, and maybe this is outing myself. I feel like alone, party of one orphan solo last woman on an Island all the time. Like 
I'm an only Mm -hmm. child, so I don't have siblings to compare to. I no longer have a family. I'm in a new city. Like there is no one except you think the gods and a few other people that I can like call and be like, you too. Like, do you have a nose? Oh, you have a nose. Like, I mean, I'm that basic at this point. (laughs) Um, Violetta says you are definitely not alone. Good. Um, not good. I was a weird, like good, not good. I, I mean, good that we're not alone not good that people feel this way too yeah like <laughs> yeah. and i send you love at the same time sorry right um yeah i think it's just we need and and covid that was one thing i know oh i left, I, I, but it's I like meant to mention COVID that too really i think made this did a doozy on all of us i think it yeah. amplified this and put a spotlight yeah. on this maybe we had it before but now now we can actually use that as like a reason for it if you want if that was or, a big thing but it's a dividing line right like it's yeah. a dividing line between like because we do this in in charleston all the time when you buy a house so like is it a hugo roof so it's like was the roof replaced oh. once hugo the hurricane came through or like was it before that so it's kind of this yeah. dividing line of being yeah. able to like tell time with stuff and i think the you know, COVID kind of has given us that, that and like dividing it isolated line. Us. We can't talk, we can't relate, we can't, right. you know, be with each other and all the things. And I think maybe that's the other thing is we talk about it all the time, find your business besties. And it doesn't matter if, how, who, whatever. If it's us, like, even if it's yeah, us. Please. <laughs> We love you. Um, and seasons and reasons. Sometimes you have them. Sometimes you don't. Sometimes they're new people. Sometimes they're old people. Like uh, again, just that injection of change, you know, and, mm-hmm. and just have the balls and like, I don't know another word, but like, just have the balls to change something like, mm-hmm. hair, like, I love this. You're always like, Ashley hair grows back. What, what do you say? Like the other day you said this, you're like, they're not, and not just marketing, but you're like, there's really nothing that's like catastrophic. Like we can fix Oh what do you yeah. Say? I tell people all the time. There's no such thing as a marketing emergency. Yeah. And, and then you just like said it the other day, like in life, you're like, there's no such thing as like a full blown emergency. We'll figure it out. Like your hair grows back. Like boys come like buses every 15 minutes, like pick another one, like whatever, like, (laughs) yeah. So I think that's where we need to get. And I think it's unfortunate that it usually takes a few martinis or cocktails or mimosas to get there where you're just like, yeah, but we need to be like that in our sober mind in our conscious mind. Mm-hmm. but you know a few mimosas doesn't it gives you for the liquid, cause liquid courage yeah sometimes. and I mean some of us some of us need more of that than others yeah alter ego yourself find your Lola see what she would do warning <laughs> but, but yeah I feel whole I feel good how about you yeah no I mean this was this was our topic for last week that we didn't get to I wasn't ready. I was like, I don't want to out myself. I don't want to talk about this yet. I, I'm not ready. I'm not. Um, and I was well, probably feeling it a little too. Cause I was just about to go in like the Thursday was the Thursday I got sick. And then I've been out the last week. So right. maybe that well, was, and, I mean, even timing wise, like I, I, the conversation we had last week was great. So I, phenomenal. Yeah. It was actually really good. Cause I went back and listened to it. Cause I did the show notes by the way. <laughs> Like if you're reading the show notes and I'm like, oh, I felt this way. And I was like, that's because it was me. <laughs> but which it's always really weird when we're doing the show notes. And I'm like, Ronnie said. I know it's like third person split yourself. Yeah. And I'm like, I don't know how to say like. I know. Like I said something brilliant. Um, but <laughs> but even this morning. <laughs> that's I said something brilliant. else writing this. Like I said something brilliant. Um, but even this morning when you brought it up, you know, like I, I replied back like immediately. It's like, this is the day to do this. So like, I'm, I have lots of thoughts on this day. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll say, we hope you enjoy. We're sending our love to you. Just if you sure. are in this, like we witness you, we see you, we yep. feel you, we get you. Like we're, we're not in it with you. Advise you, advise yeah. your damn self because in truth, you know what you need to do. So just like, yep. Hey, and we're, we're in, we're in the weeds with you. Yeah. And we will support, like, tell us like where you're at, like we'll, we'll support you on it. So like accountability and you don't, and you don't have to do it publicly. Like we do. No, no. I mean like no. pro- props to us, but, mm. um, so mimosa hotline every Thursday, same yep. time, same place. We're here. If there's topics that you want us to address, if there's business questions that you have, again, anonymously or not, we are coming out with a hotline for you to call in anonymously and tell us your tips and tricks and questions Mm -hmm. and things. But until then, like we're here for you. So engage with us in the comments is where it's at. Leave us your notes. Um, What do I say? Thoughts, feelings, concerns, emotional outbursts. Let us have it. We are here for it. If you misbehave, we'll block you. So, um, 
I think that's it. Yeah. Just and stay tuned for all of our exciting updates over the next two. Yeah, months. we got a lot going on, people. Yep. It's we sure do. So yeah. Um, be in the know and we will see you next week. Yeah. Bye guys. Bye.